Hey everybody, this is Russ from Retro Game Core, and this is my 3DS. Actually, it's called the new Nintendo 2DS XL. And yeah, they really did a number with those naming conventions. Now recently, Nintendo closed the eShop for both the 3DS and the Wii U. And many owners, like myself, were concerned about what you can actually do with the 3DS now that the shop has been closed. Well, in this video here, I'm going to show you how to install custom firmware on your device. And this process is called many different things. Sometimes they call it hacking or maybe jailbreaking, but it's all the same. And after we're done here, we're going to unlock a lot of potential for the 3DS. And what we're going to do in this video specifically is do the jailbreak. In the next week or two, I'm going to release a series of videos. Those are going to show you how to do things like play backups of your 3DS games, but then also how to play Nintendo DS games natively on the device. And then we're also going to play some retro games. We can do that either through the virtual console or a process known as injecting. And then finally, we can do emulation through platforms like RetroArch. But I'm getting ahead of myself because those are going to be in later videos. And so for now, let's go ahead and hack your Nintendo 3DS. To start, let's talk about tools. Number one, you're going to need a computer. It can be a Windows machine or a Mac, it doesn't really matter. In addition, you're going to need a micro SD card. I would recommend 128 gigs or larger. It's really going to depend on how many games you're going to store on your 3DS. And then finally, you'll need a micro SD card reader so you can plug it into your computer. Now, as far as the jailbreaking process itself, I actually wouldn't recommend solely using this video guide. And that's because over time, these processes could change, and so it's always better to consult written guides. And this is the one I recommend here, the 3DS Hacks Guide, and I'll leave it linked in the video description below. And that was the guide that I used when I was hacking my 3DS, and that's what we'll follow here in this video too. So if anything, this is going to be a visual supplement to the written guide, but the written guide should be what you consult first. A better way of looking at it is that this video here is a demonstration that the written guide does definitely work. And with all that out of the way, let's actually get set up. Now I've had this 2DS for a while, in fact I got it when it first came out back in 2017. And at this point, it's usually my kids who play this the most, that's why it's so beat up. On here I've got a few games that I downloaded from the eShop, as well as a bunch of demos too. And I've also purchased some virtual console games over the years. However, for the most part, we usually will just play on these physical cartridges like this. And once we're done jailbreaking in this, in a future video, I'll show you how to back all these up. But what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to wipe the entire console. I'm going to get rid of all my games, save files, all that kind of stuff, and start from scratch. This step is not necessary, but it's something I wanted to do just out of an abundance of caution. After all, my Nintendo Online account is associated with this machine right now. And so by wiping everything, I'm not going to have any of those associations, and I can just kind of go nuts on the hacked console. Either way, to format the device, you can just go through the settings and it'll walk you through that process. And once that's done, I'm going to go through the initial setup here and set up the Wi-Fi. But again, I'm not going to log into my Nintendo Online account. So essentially, we're going to start here with a blank slate. Now, as we run through this process here, I'm going to consult the written guide several times. For example, on their first page here, it'll show you that every 3DS model is going to work with this guide, and it'll talk a little bit about different computers and SD cards as well. And if you are going to use a card that's over 32 gigs, you need to format it to FAT32. To do this, you're going to use an app called GUI Format. Again, I'll have this linked below. All you have to do is just download the app and then open it up. From there, make sure that it's pointing to a drive that is associated with your SD card and not an actual hard drive. After that, I recommend closing all other windows and then press start. It's going to ask, do you really want to do this? And you say, yeah man, I want to do it. After that, the SD card is ready to go. Now we're going to go to the next page on the written guide and verify which system that we have. To do this, go into the settings menu here and up top it's going to give you a version number. From there, choose either the old or new 3DS and then add in that version number right here. And the option it's giving me is the homebrew launcher. If it doesn't give you this option, then I would recommend just following the written guide and not this video. But if it also gave you the homebrew launcher, let's go ahead and get started. First thing, we want to update the device to the most recent version. So we're going to go into the settings here and into system update, and then follow all the prompts so that you can update your system. For me, my device is up to date, and so I don't have to do anything else. Next, we're going to go ahead and power down the device, and then start loading files onto our SD card. And as you can imagine, the links to the files will be in the written guide. To start, we're going to grab Luma3DS from their GitHub page. It's as simple as just clicking on the zip file and then putting it in your downloads folder. Same thing with the next file, which is called Super Skater Hacks. Again, you'll go to their GitHub page, grab that zip file, and then put it in your downloads. So we're going to have two windows here. On the left will be my computer, and on the right will always be the SD card. And as you can see, the SD card is completely blank. Now I'm going to use an app called 7-Zip to unzip these files. If you don't have it installed on your computer already, I would highly recommend it. And I'm going to right-click on Luma 3DS, and then select Open With and 7-Zip. 
you're going to see two files pop up in this window here, and you're going to drag them over to your SD card. After that, you can close out of 7-zip, and then we'll do the same thing with the next file here. Here, you're going to open up whatever folder is associated with the region for your device, and then grab all these files and move them to the root directory of your SD card. And this is what the file system should look like right here. Let's go ahead and eject the SD card and put it into our 3DS. And then we're going to turn on the device. Once you're powered up, you're going to scan a QR code, press the L and R buttons on the device to bring up the camera, and then on the written guide there will be a link to the QR code. You can open it up on your computer, but I'm going to do it on a phone just to make it easier to see. From there, what you want to do is tap on the little QR code here in the 3DS menu, and then scan the code that reflects the device's region. It'll say URL found, and you can press OK, and it'll ask you to launch the internet browser. Again, press OK. And next, we'll see this page right here. Before we actually open it, we need to do a couple other things. Number one, press the select button to bring up the bookmarks menu, and then choose bookmark this page. That way we'll have easy access to it later if we need it. Next, press B to back out to the internet browser, and now press start to bring up the hamburger menu. Here, click on settings, then delete cookies, and then say, yeah man, I want to do it. Next, we're going to press the home button and close out of the web browser, and then we're going to open it right back up again. And it should show you that page again, but if it doesn't, go ahead and grab it from your bookmarks. Next, we're ready to use it. We're going to tap on the go go link right here, and you may get a pop-up notification like this. Just go ahead and press OK. You're going to see a series of colors and a little bit of text, and then it'll get into the homebrew launcher like this. And once we're in here, you're good to go. Go ahead and press on the power button to shut the device off. And now we need to test whether or not your 3DS can go into safe mode. To do this, we're going to hold on to the L and R shoulder buttons while also pressing up on the D-pad and the A button. And while pressing all four of these buttons, we're going to tap on the power button to boot the device up and it should take you to the system update screen that you see right here. If you run into any issues during this process, I recommend going back to the written guide and looking at their troubleshooting tips. Either way, I'm going to assume that you did make it to this screen, so we're going to press the cancel button to shut down the device again. Next, we'll power it back on and get into the main menu. From here, we're going to open up the internet browser again, and then tap on that GoGo -Go link. And you're going to go through that same process again, and you'll be greeted with the homebrew launcher. But this time, we are going to tap on this slot tool right here. That'll bring up this text menu on the upper screen, and what we want to do is select that first option, Install Exploit to Wi-Fi Slots 1, 2, 3, and Shut Down. Once you tap on it, you'll get a visual confirmation, and the device will turn off. And from here, we're going to remove the SD card from the device, and then put it back into our computer. Next, we're going to install the bootstrap, which will allow us to hack the device. And back on that written guide, you'll have a link to three different downloads. The top two are just direct downloads, which means you just click on the link and it should go right into your downloads folder. And the third one is going to take you to a GitHub page. Again, what we want to do right here is just download the zip file. Once we have those files installed and the SD card in our device, we're going to make a new folder right here on the SD card. And we're going to call this folder boot 9 strap all one word. And I'm going to refresh my window right here so it goes near the top. And now we can start adding some of our downloaded files to the card. We're going to start with the bootstrap zip file. Again, we're going to open up with 7-zip. And we're going to take both of these files here and put them in that new boot 9 strap folder. Next, we're going to open up the safe installer app right here, again with 7-zip. And we only need one of these files. It's the one called safeb9installer.bin. And this one we just need to move to the root directory of our SD card. And then finally, we'll open up the release zip file, again via 7-zip. And here we also only need one file. It's the one called usm.bin, and we'll put this in the root directory of the SD card. After that, we're good. We can eject the SD card, and now we're going to boot the device again into safe mode. So I'm going to hold on to the shoulder buttons, plus up and A button, and then press power. And this time, when it asks you to update the system, we are going to press OK. Here, just go ahead and accept any of the prompts that come up. And after a moment, it's going to say that it wasn't able to update, and it'll give you an error code of 003-1099. And this is actually exactly what we want, so just go ahead and press OK. Next, it'll ask you if you want to configure your internet settings. You want to press Yes here. On the next screen, you want to tap on Connection 1, and then Change Settings. From there, move over one page until you get to this section here with the proxy settings. Once you tap on that, select Detailed Setup. And this is going to be the exploit right here. You'll see a couple colors flash on the screen, and then you'll be greeted with this menu right here. And it's going to say, to install Firm, you need to enter the sequence below. And the sequence for you right here is probably going to be different. Either way, just go ahead and press whatever arrows it says, then the A button. This will take just a minute, and it'll say the installation was successful. From here, press the A button to continue, and we're going to see a bunch of different options right here. We're not going to do any of these configurations. We're just going to press on the Start button, which will take us back to the main menu. Next, we're going to navigate to this app right here. It's called Download Play. Go ahead and open that one up, 
And when you get to the menu right here that shows DS or 3DS, what you want to do is press the L button, plus it down on the D-pad, and then select. And this is going to bring up a new Luma 3DS menu called Rosalina. And within here, navigate to Miscellaneous Options and press A, and then choose the first option right here. Switch the HB title to the current app. And you should get a confirmation that the operation succeeded. Go ahead and press the B button, and that'll take us back to the main Rosalina menu. We can press B again to get back to the download play menu, and then tap on the home button, and then press the X button to close the software. And now we're actually going to go right back into that download play app. But this time it should take us to the homebrew launcher instead. Now we're going to tap on that slot tool again. And this time we're going to restore the original Wi-Fi slots 1, 2, and 3. You'll get another confirmation and it should boot you back to the main menu. And if it does, go ahead and power down your device. Next, we're going to remove the SD card and put it back into our computer for a third time. And we're actually on the final page now, so we're getting close to the home stretch. Here you want to scroll about a quarter of the way down through the page, and you'll find a bunch of different files you're supposed to download. And let me walk you through each of these. We're going to start with Anemone 3DS. And for this one, once we get to the GitHub page, we're going to download the CIA file. Once you have that downloaded, we're going to get to the next app. This one is called Checkpoint. Same thing here, we want to download the CIA file. The next app is going to be the Homebrew Launcher Wrapper. Again, once you get to the GitHub page, download that CIA file. And it'll be the exact same process with the next app here called Universal Updater. At the risk of repeating myself again, make sure you grab that CIA file. Next, we're going to go to FBI, and this time it'll be a little bit different. We're going to download the CIA file, but then also the one that's labeled as 3DSX. And then finally, we're going to download God Mode 9. And this one's also going to be on GitHub, but this time we're actually going to download the zip file. And once we have all these downloaded, we're going to put them on the SD card. To start, we're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call this one CIAs. And as you can imagine, we're going to put all these CIA files into this. Altogether, it should be five different files, and it should only take a couple seconds to copy them over. Next, we'll go into the 3DS folder within the root directory of our SD card. And here we're going to put that other FBI file, the one that's labeled 3DSX. Now we're going to go back to the root directory of the SD card and open up the Luma folder. Within here, we're going to make a new folder, and we're going to call this one Payloads. Next, go ahead and open up the GodMode9 zip file with 7-zip. And here, find the file that says GodMode9.firm. Put that one into the Payloads folder. And then finally, back on 7-zip, we're going to find that GM9 folder and put that into the root directory of our SD card. And that's it, you're good to go. Let's go ahead and eject the SD card and put it back into our device. Now, once you power on the device, the written guide recommends that you try to do a system update again. But because we already updated our system earlier, chances are it's just going to say that your system is already up to date. Either way, I'm going to stick to the written guide and do that step anyway. Once that's done, we're going to go back into the main menu and then open up the download play app again. And again, we're going to get into Rosalina. So we're going to hold on to the L shoulder button and then press down and select. And once we're in the Rosalina menu, we're going to go back into miscellaneous options. Again, we're going to select switch the HB title to the current app. And then we're going to back out of download play and then close the app. Now when we open it up again, we should see the homebrew launcher as well as the FBI app right here. And for the next step, we need to go back into Rosalina. So L down and select. And then once we're here, we're going to go back into the miscellaneous options. And this time we're going to select the bottom most option, the one that says dump DSP firmware. Go ahead and press the A button here and it'll give you a confirmation once it's done. Next, go one up to the nullify user time offset. This is going to set our real time clock to the actual clock. And again, you're going to get a confirmation once it's done. Then just go ahead and press B button a few times to get out of the Rosalina menu. And once we're back in the homebrew launcher, now we're going to tap on the FBI app. Now we want to install the CIA files that we added to the SD card earlier. Within FBI, we're going to open up the SD option here, then go into the CIA's folder that we made, and next click on the current directory option. Here you want to select install and delete all CIAs. It's going to ask you to confirm, go ahead and press yeah man I want to do it, and then it'll go through and install each of these apps. It should only take a minute or so. Once it's done, just go ahead and press OK, and now we can press the home button to get back to the main menu. You'll get a prompt here that new software has been added. But before we open up all of our shiny new presents, let's go ahead and close out of the download play app. Now you can tap on each of these and you'll see that you now have access to a bunch of different fun homebrew apps. As a quick orientation, these will include things like the ability to use backup saves, or also change out your themes, and then we have FBI which will install CIA files, and then also direct access to the homebrew launcher. And finally, we also have the Universal Updater which kind of works like a third-party app store. 
But before we get into any of the fun stuff, let's do one last step, which is to back up all of our data. To do this, we're going to power down the device, and then we're going to boot into God mode. To do that, you hold on to the start button and then press on power. When you first start it, it's going to say that essential files backup is not found. Do you want to create one? We're going to select A for yes. It'll give you a confirmation. Just go ahead and press A to continue. Next, we're going to press on the home button to bring up the main menu here, and we're going to go down to scripts. And within here, you'll find one that says God mode 9 mega script. Go ahead and click on that and then select Setup Luma 3DS to CTR NAND. This is going to move your jailbreak over to the internal storage so that you can still access it even if you don't have the SD card inside. Go ahead and press A to continue, and then A again to unlock the system NAND. It's going to give you a series of combinations to tap here to confirm, and once it's done, it's going to say that Luma 3DS was copied successfully. Press A to continue, and then back on this menu here, go ahead and select Clean Up SD Card. And this is going to remove your setup files from the card, so go ahead and press A to continue, and then A again to confirm once it's done. Now press the B button to get back to this main menu here, and next we're going to go into the Backup Options section. Here we're going to make a backup of the system NAND. Go ahead and press A here, and it's going to make sure that you have enough space. It's going to take about 1.3 gigs altogether. If you're good to go, go ahead and press the A button, and then it's going to take some time, about 10 minutes altogether, to run through this process. Once it's done, it's going to say the backup was created successfully, and press the A button to continue. From there, tap the B button to get back to the main menu, and then you can select Exit. It's going to say that the right permissions were changed. Do you want to relock them? Go ahead and press A to say yes. And now we're back in the main Godmo 9 menu. Here on the upper screen, we're going to navigate down to the SysNan Virtual option here. Go ahead and tap on the A button, and then find the file that says essential.exefs. Here, press the A button, and on the bottom screen, we're going to go to the section that says copy to 0gm9 slash out. It might give you a prompt that it already exists. If it does, go ahead and press overwrite files. You'll get a confirmation that you're good to go. Press the A button. And now we're ready to move over these backup files to a safe location. Press the home button to get to this menu here, and then select power off system. Once it's powered down, go ahead and eject the SD card and put it into your computer for the final time. Now on our main computer, we want to make a new folder. I'm going to call this one 3DS Backup. And here we're going to put some files for safekeeping. On your SD card, go into this folder here called GM9. Then go into the Out folder and you should see three files like this. And these are your backup files. We're going to move all three of these over into that backup folder that we made on our computer. After you've copied over these files, you can actually delete the original ones. You don't need them on the card. Next, we'll go back to the root directory of our SD card and then go into the Luma folder here. And then you should have a folder called Backups. Move this Backups folder into that other backup folder on a computer as well. And after that, you should pack yourself on your back because we have successfully jailbroken your 3DS and made a backup for safekeeping. After you eject your SD card and put it back in, you can basically do whatever you'd like. And down below, I'm going to leave a link to different things that you can do with a jailbroken 3DS. But as a quick tease here, I would recommend going into the Universal Updater app and here you're going to be able to browse through a variety of apps that you can install directly onto your DS. Some of these are going to include things like homebrew games, but there will also be a couple emulators as well as this one here which is really important called Twilight Menu++. This essentially is going to create a Nintendo DS environment within your 3DS. But because this video is getting so long here, I'm not going to show you how to do it in this one. Instead, I'll make a future video to show you how to set up Nintendo DS games on the 3DS. It's super easy and a lot of fun. And really, that's about it for this video here. I wanted to show you how to hack your 3DS, and now we're good to go. In the next week or two, I'm going to make a series of videos, including how to get DS games running on here, but then also how to back up your 3DS games. That's going to include how to install your cartridge games directly onto the device, but then also if you have some 3DS ROMs, I'll show you how to get them loaded up on here as well. And then finally, I'll do a separate video to show you how to run emulated games. For that one, we're going to use a couple different processes, and that should be a lot of fun too. In the end, hacking your 3DS is actually a fairly easy process. It's just a matter of moving around a bunch of files. But there's quite a few steps to this process, and so I understand why it might be a little bit intimidating. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming!